We have been seeing more and more frameworks being built to integrate AI into our operating systems. Today, we're going to be taking a look at AIOS, which is a project that is infusing AI into our own operating systems to automate as well as deploying AI agents onto our computer. AIOS is a large language model agent operating system. It's something that embeds different large language models like Mixtral, you have Quen, as well as many other LMs into our operating system as a brain of the OS. And it's something that enables the OS to have a soul, you can say. It's a system that is designed to optimize resource allocation, facilitating context switch across different agents, enabling concurrent execution of agents, providing tool services, maintaining access control, and providing rich sets of toolkits for different large language model agent devs. Now, I want you guys to take a look at this figure right here, which is a figure that is motivating an example of how an agent, a travel agent in this case, requires both large language model level and an OS level resource and functions to complete a task. So in this example, it's utilizing both of these two factors to function on completing a different task. It involves organizing a trip based on the user's preference. So we can see that the user is stating that I'm flying from San Francisco to New York for the for business next month. Please help me organize a trip. So this query is then sent to the travel agent that is operating on the OS. So whenever the agent interacts with the large language model service for tasks such as retrieving preferences, it makes decisions on tools as well as APIs that generate reviews as well as responses. It also interacts with the traditional OS services for tasks like accessing disk drives. You also have the ability to execute software. So for each step that you can see over here, there's one step, two steps, three steps, etc. And in these steps, it involves a combination of a large language model reasoning, as well as an OS level action. So it focuses on the preference retrieval, you have the flight and hotel recommendation, which is utilizing different things such as a tool API that is managed by the LM, you have an LM storage managed by the large language model, disk storage, which is uh, operated by the traditional OS, you have tool API, software, software, text generation, and all of these steps are working alongside with the agents that are deployed on our OS. Now, Sorry for being repetitive, but this month we had insane partnerships with big companies giving out subscriptions to AI tools completely for free. These are tools that will streamline your business's growth and improve your efficiency. Just being a patron this past month, you were given access to six paid subscriptions completely for free. Not only do you access these subscriptions, but you gain the ability for consulting, networking, collaborating with the community as well as with myself you get access to daily ai news resources giveaways and so much more if you're interested check out the patreon link in the description below to gain access to these benefits yes. now if you are to read the research paper further it discusses the challenges that are posed by increasing complexity and the quantity of agents such as the resource management of agents scheduling as well as privacy concerns so what this paper has done to address these challenges is that they proposed the AI OS architecture, which is depicted in this figure below. And this is something that we're going to take a look at as you go further. But in brief, it's an architecture that includes a large language model specific kernel and is designed to isolate large language model related tasks as well as resources from other OS functions. And this kernel like is basically broken off into several different modules. And it's something that is really interesting and it's something that you can actually deploy on your computer today. And it's something that we're gonna be taking a look at as to how you can get started so that you can deploy these different AI agents so that it can work on accomplishing various tools, such as an agent scheduler that prioritizes and schedules agent requests to optimize large language model utilization and such forth. I'm not gonna be going over all of these because the intro is already way too long, but this is something that we're gonna be taking a look at throughout today's video. So I hope you enjoy it, stay tuned, and let's get straight to it. If you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one with me where you can access my consulting services, where I can help you grow your business or basically give you a lot of different types of solutions with AI. Definitely take a look at the calendar link in the description below. 
Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the world of AI. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this project, which is AIOS, large language model agents in our operating system. Now, we already mentioned how it basically functions, but let's actually take a deeper dive as to how this architecture uh, like operates. It, as I stated before, it functions through kernels that consist of several different modules. We talked about agent scheduler, but context manager is something that supports snapshotting and restoring the immediate generation status. And this is for the large language model. It manages the context window as well. You have memory managers, which are providing short-term memory for agents that are interacting with different logs. You have store manager, storage manager, which is a persistent agent that interacts with logs in long-term storage. Tool manager it is a manager that agents call for external API tools. And lastly, you have the access manager, which enforces privacy and access control policies between agents. These basically are different modules that work together to enhance the management and the coordination of large language model related activities within the operating system that you deploy AI OS within. So this is how the overall like architecture would work based off of these kernels. Now we're going to go into a deeper dive as to how it basically functions. And this is where the kernel exposes an LM system through a call interface for agents to access these services. So it basically functions through this whole architecture. It's kind of complicated, but if you are to get a deeper dive by reading through the different layers, which they specify, you would get a better idea. Now, before we go further into the video, I want to specify for the people who would be interested in installing this, it's kind of pretty easy. What you would want to do is you would want to clone this repository. So you would basically want to go into your command prompt and there's a couple of prerequisites that you would need, which I should specify before. Firstly, you need to make sure that you have pip, git, as well as a functional hugging face hub token ID. So once you have these things ready, as well as the memory to host something like a gamma 2 point uh, 2 billion parameter model, you should be able to host this quite easily. So what you're going to be doing is going into your command prompt, you're going to be cloning this repo. So what you would do is just clone this repo by copying it and clicking this green button, which will give you the access to the link. You can scroll down, go into your repo and type in git clone, press enter. Once you have cloned this, you can then wait until it finishes cloning. And then you can go into this AIOS folder by typing in CD AIOS. Once you're in this directory, you can start installing the requirements. And they basically specify that make sure you have Python 3.9 or greater, and you need to install the required packages with this command. So you can simply just go in, paste this command in, and press enter. This will take a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes, depending on your computer. But once it finishes doing that, in the meantime, you can work on finding your Hugging Face ID, which I'll showcase how you can do it. So to get your Hugging Face access ID, you can go on to Hugging Face. If you do not have an account, definitely create one. Once you have done that, click on this icon over here, which is your profile and go to settings. Once you are in your settings, go to the access token key, create a new token. You want to name it AIOS and you can just keep it whatever you want. Generate the token. Copy this copen, ah, token, and then we can go proceed forward with installation. Now, what you want to do next is then set your Hugging Face ID within AIOS. This is obviously after it has finished installing the requirements. So what you would want to do is copy this command. Now, if you are on Windows, you don't want to use the export function. You want to use set as your command, and you would basically type in set Hugging Face ID. The, everything normal just replaced your uh, token in this uh, section over here, which is your read token. What once that is done, you want to then do set hugging face and then your cache directory. And once you have basically set that, you can run the main.py to start. And this is something that's really important. You can choose between these two LMs at the moment. You have gamma 2B as well as Mistral 8X7B. So what you would want to do in this case, you want to make sure that you replace the max GPU memory and the eval device based off of your own requirements. And you can definitely find that on your own operating system or your own control panel, which will tell you the information on what's your max GPU. 
I currently do not have any requirements to run these models, so I'm not going to be testing it out. I don't want to fry my, fry my computer, but this is easy as that. You can then have the interface, which will pop up into your command prompt stating what you need to do next. It will basically specify what sort of tasks you want to do with the LM as the brain of your operating system. And it can execute various tasks on your system and do. you can basically accomplish various things with the different modules that we mentioned before. And that's about it for getting started with AIOS. So let's actually take a look at the architecture once again, because we have a couple of components that we have left to take a look at. We have these AI OS layers. It's basically split up into three layers. You have the application layer, you have the OS layer, which is the kernel layer, and then you have the hardware layer. Firstly, with the application layer, it's where the agent applications like the travel agent, you have the coding agent, math agent are being deployed and developed. So what happens is that this system, the AI OS system is providing the SDK at this layer, which abstracts of the system calls are being used to simplify the whole development process for the agent. So it's working alongside with the AI OS SDK. It is then sending the related calls to the LM. If it's not needed for LM based activities, it is then going to the OS kernel, which is then going to require the hardware functionalities. And this is where we go to the kernel layer and it's it's basically consisting of the two main components, which we mentioned before, the OS kernel and the LM kernel. The OS kernel handles the non-specific operations of an LM, as whereas the LM kernel is dedicated for LM specific tasks. And this segregation you can see is allowing for LM kernel to focus on the critical LM related activities. And these are the modules that we mentioned. They actually go a little bit more in depth on each and every module, which gives you a better idea as to what you can do with these different agents when they're deployed on your OS. And lastly, we have the hardware layer. This is encompassing a physical component of the system, such as your CPU, GPU, memory, as well as many of the other components over here. Now, after reading a couple of sections of this report, I was just wondering, what are some practical use cases for AI OS? Like, why would you actually involve having the trouble to integrate AI into your operating system. Well, there's obviously going to be a lot of different use cases for different preferences, but one thing that would really benefit for me is that having it so that it would be used for coding. And this is where I would deploy different AI powered large language models by infusing it into the operating system based off the framework that they have provided. And this would involve deploying a personalized virtual coding assistant. And this would help me for like basic coding needs, filling out different prototypes, as well as helping me in various cases where I would need debugging. Now, this coding agent would be tailored for specific programming languages, and it would also help me with real-time support. And that was just one thing that I, I really thought about because it could help me with auto-completion, code snippets. It could help me with error detection, as well as syntax highlighting. And this was one thing that I was just thinking that it could assist me in, and I would just wonder what other people would do with this. And I really always, whenever I make videos on this, I know these tools are really helpful, but in practical use cases, I don't really try each and every one of them out, but I would really be intrigued to see what my viewers are building and doing with these different tool sets. So if you're interested, you can even pitch me an email, showcase what you've built with it. And that I can like possibly even make a website in the future where I, I compile all the tool sets that I showcase and all the use cases that people have developed. And this is like the community aspect that I really want to develop with this channel. I want to have an interactive AI community that would be basically pitching out different ideas and different tools. I already do that with the discord, but I would be interested in having a more open source like community where everyone can contribute to that. So if you're interested in that, definitely send me an email on what sort of things that you would build with all the tools that I cover in my like videos. And I'd be interested to see what you guys have been building. And obviously if it's super interesting, I would definitely make a video on it. But I know I'm rambling too much now. <laughs> That's basically it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it guys. This is definitely an, a great tool that I personally see some sort of use case out of for deploying on your local computer. It's basically giving a brain to your OS. And this is something that we have mentioned previously in this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys.
If you haven't, definitely check out the Patreon page. This is a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news, as well as accessing different subscriptions. We have a growing community and it's just growing like tremendously over the past few months. And I truly recommend that you would love it. And you, if you are to join it, you will definitely benefit from. Make sure you check out the Twitter page if you haven't. This is a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe. Turn on the notification bell. Like this video. Check out our previous videos. There's a lot of content that you would definitely benefit from. So with that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity. And I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.